Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiakos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I'm going to sign or no for Olympiakos, I say, you're a crazy good deal, like my friend. I can't speak, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, everybody? Gate 7 International here. Uh, we welcome you on another episode uh, of our podcast. Uh, this comes a night uh, after Olibiakos' drab draw Anatromitos, quite a poor result. Uh, Olympiakos missed a great chance to come a little closer uh, to the top of the to the top of the table. I am joined with my fellow co with my co-hosts. Uh, let's let's go alphabetically. Costa with a C, Costa Levoyani. How are you, buddy? What's happening, man? Long time no see. Four of us on the show. It's been a while. It's been a while. Hopefully, soon enough, it's going to be all of us in. Labros, uh, Sirmos joining us as well, the, the star of Gate 7 International, as per everyone, every single one of our fans. How are you, Labro? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Things are all right. Actually, yesterday, that's a lie. We're, that's a lie. yesterday <laughs> we're in the mood, to be honest, but we can talk about it later. Um, it's been 24 yeah. hours, so hopefully it's going to be a little calmer this time, calmer, or not, no. or not. No, you know, maybe we, you know, maybe there is a rant on the way. We can only hope, guys. And yeah. last but certainly not least, our good friend Marcial De Bo. How are you, buddy? Well, it was kind of hard this morning to to forget what happened last night. Last night, but I'm okay. And of course, uh, I am Costas Llanos, Costas with a K. Uh, guys, please, if you haven't done so. Please like and subscribe. Uh, spread the word. Uh, we are the best source for Olympiacos news for, for international fans. Uh, we want to keep uh, keep growing. Uh, you, the fans, the subscribers, that's the backbone of what we do. And we're going to keep uh, coming to you with some amazing content about Olympiacos, some amazing exclusive interviews, and of course, exclusive news. But of course, before we get started, as our good friend Aris would have been saying, uh, let's start with a few uh, with a few of our sponsors. Uh, Piraeus International, of course, for those of you that may be looking to ship, whether you're sh shipping from the United States, from the UK, from Australia, anywhere in Europe, because you're trying to move to Greece or anywhere else, then give our friends a call at Piraeus International. They can handle all of your trans shipping needs internationally, whatever it needs to be, wherever it's got to go, then get in touch to, with www.piraeusintl.com. I'll say it again, www.piraeusintl.com or call them on 410-675-4696. Again, that's 410-675-4696. And uh, I'll, get to, I'll, I'll get to our next sponsor as well, just uh, so we can get with the show as well. But obviously, uh, Gate 7 International guys, if you want to, get, to bet along with us, then use our promo code Gate7INTL at betus.com.pa. I'll say it again. That's betus.com.pa. Share your bets with us. We will give you guys a lot of insight that will help you make better bets. With, uh, so uh, the promo code, again, is Gate7INTL, and you can use it at betus.com.pa. We also put posts on socials with the link that will take you directly to the page you have to go, and you can enter the information there. Uh, guys, this has been quite a, quite a few 24 hours, quite some 24 hours. Uh, Olympiakos, another draft draw, uh, further from the, the, from the top, back in fourth place, same points as Pag, who are flying right now as well, and Olympiakos are facing them uh, a week uh, from Sunday when they face... Offy, if I remember correctly. Uh, Costa, let's start off alphabetically again. Let's hear your thoughts from that game. You're on mute, pal. Uh, there we go again. Um, honestly, man, with this team, it's one of those things this year where you think that we've reached a turning point and then you get slammed back down to earth very abruptly. And I think yesterday was... Um, was another one of those days where 
it seemed a lot like the Yanina game to a certain extent. Um, I say that because I think the manager's lost the game to a great extent. I think he has a, a lot of the blame. I A few weeks ago, I said that we should praise Mitchell for the job that he's done so far. Uh, I stick by that statement in a sense that I think that he has managed to bring some psychology, some some confidence to the team that was lacking. He prioritised cutting down the roster, which we have seen some some players leave over this uh, this winter transfer window and, and and prior. And and yeah, we've gotten some results. We won our first big game of the season, if you can call it that, against Aris in a tight one nil. 1-0 victory. Um, we saw him make mistakes in that Jan in a game in terms of game time management. And then in the next few games after that, he seemed to like make good changes, like ones that made sense. And then yesterday, none of his changes made sense. Uh, with you know, taking off the goal scorer, taking off the player that made the assist, playing with M Villas and only as the only midfielder so so yeah uh, disappointing we could have you know the manager said after the game that we could have cut the game um we could have cut the gap well we have cut the gap more and we're closing in on Panathinaikos but honestly uh I see yesterday as a missed opportunity and for me uh it might be early to say this for some but I think it's, it's very clear to me that Olympiakos can't go into next season with this manager and uh the club needs to think about what they want to do this summer and some brave decisions need to be taken. Uh, we still fight for the league, uh, but um, I'm already already thinking about next summer and quite worried about that. But I won't go into that now. Those are my first kind of thoughts. Well, obviously, I mean, Mitchell uh, did come in uh, maybe as more of a wartime manager who's going to come in and uh, take care of all the mess at Olympiacos. Uh, he did tighten up the team. He did tighten up the squad. Olympiacos are undefeated uh, this year so far, but still the results and the, and the performances mainly are not uh, convincing enough. What do you make of the whole thing, Labro? I, yesterday, um, watching the team, I think... Well, I watched a lot of football yesterday, a lot of Greek football. I watched the game of Ike, I watched the game Panathinaikos Pauk, I watched the Olympiacos game. And I think the level that you see is just Olympiacos is nowhere near the team playing ability of Ike and Pauk. I think Panathinaikos is out of the conversation. I think they'll finish fourth at the end of the season, to be honest. But no, and I'm, that's not even an insult to them. They, they didn't buy in players. They got injuries. The depth is bad, and the rest of the league has figured them out. So I think they're in big trouble. But the problem with Olympiacos is just the complete lack of dynamic players in the team. You And what I mean is fast players, direct players, players who can score. You look at the, the front four, I guess, of this three tens plus Bakambu, and I guess Bakambu's good in a straight line, you know, the ball over the top and he runs, but the agility and burst taking people one-on-one -on -one is not really his thing. And those tens, a lot of, they don't track back. They're not exactly speedsters, I would say. And you just, you look at them and there's a lot of walking, let's say, just like there's not enough movement. The team plays so slow. And when you watch Pauk or you watched Ike at this weekend, they move the ball like this, interplay, runs, in behind, blah, blah, blah. It's real football, attacking football. They have their weaknesses. They're going to get exposed at some point. I'm not saying they're perfect teams, but they play a fast, modern style of football. And w when you watch football outside of Greece, like how many teams have just gotten rid of the 10 position completely as well? You know, versus Olympiakos with three tens. you know. I, I was watching the the game of Manchester United and uh, Arsenal. Let's not even compare. But I hey, guess Bruno United, Fern United did play with a number 10. They well, played with a, Fernandes, but I was thinking of Arsenal. And you're watching Arsenal play, and there was no real 10, like Xhaka and Odegaard kind of go between, and then you have Thomas they, they Partey. They played a 4-3-3, three, three, but a four, three, 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 yeah, do yeah. play a 4-2-3-1 with Edegaard, this number 10. Sorry to interrupt you, just uh, but, <laughs> you actually reminded me. But do you know me. what I mean? But it's more fluid. Like, James Rodriguez could not yeah. play the role that Martin Odegaard plays. Fortunis could not play that role. 
Pep Biel sure as hell, I think he's more like a winger to 10 even further. So it's like, it's like not modern football tactics that I think we're watching at Olympiacos. It's a bit old school. And it works because the quality of Olympiacos players are so high. You know, James Rodriguez, Fortunis, Pep Biel, Bakambu. These are players who maybe individually on a different team with other pieces around them can explode and whatever. But it seems like we're getting caught. Um, and I was looking at the results. The games with Aris, I think, gave false confidence. But but you watch Olympiacos and it's like there, there's nothing really going forward. I and, and 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 it's so fragile. This little puzzle that Mitchell has built, that he's built, is so fragile. He's relying on Pascal Lakis, who, in my opinion, is one of the most inconsistent players. Like he's been fine so far at Olympiacos. Thank God. You have Doy, who's 19 or 18 years old. Like, is the burnout coming for Doy? He's our best defender. And then you have Socrates as his partner, who's 34, 35, gets injured like this. It's just so fragile. James gets injured very easily. He's quite... Fortuny's coming off the ACL. And then you look at the bench. We went from having the biggest squad in all of Greece. The squad's quite small, if you look at it now. Like, it's almost too small. They only have two real wingers off the bench in Gary Rodriguez and Masuras. And Masuras is in tragic form. I know he scored, I think, at the weekend with Aris, but... Jesus Christ, and Gary Rodriguez, I never... He's had his flashes for Olympiacos, but I just don't think he's at the level required. So it's super fragile, and it's been easy. I think that's the main thing. We talked about, I think, Martial and I had a podcast a month ago. Like, you look at the games from December, and the only derby was Aris, and the only difficult games away were Pasianina and this game against Atromitos away. And the team has failed both of those. So it's a mirage. It feels a bit like a mirage from the shit we've seen all the first half of the season. We got these results against shitty teams and Michel has put the thing. But now the cards are coming. Like the water's boiling, as they say. We're going to Addis away with one goal advantage. We're playing Pauk. It seems like this week could be do or die for, for Michel and Olympiacos this season. This well, yeah, there's been... There's been a lot of inconsistency. I mean, obviously, the league rivals are going to drop some more points going forward. I believe that, actually. I, I truly believe that. But the thing is, Olympiacos are, uh, have been unable to, uh, to take advantage of those opportunities. What do you make of the whole thing, Martial? Well, it's, a, it's a good question because after a draw, it's really difficult to think. Like, it's really frustrating to uh, frustrating to to draw like that like the draw in Yanina because you're kind of mind be mad because you you were expecting a, a win but as, at the same time a draw in Peristeri is like something that we could have expected from this team because it's a difficult place to win uh, as you said uh, Costa earlier like I, I I think none of the top team in Greece have won in Peristeri this season so it was probably the the place we could have dropped points. And the fact is that I have the impression that Panathinaikos dropped points, but we did not uh, win points back from Haik nor Pauk, if I'm correct, because they have dropped points too, but we drop it at the same time. I don't know if it's clear what I want to say, but the only team that lost points out of the, the big four of, the, of Greece is Panathinaikos until now. In the beginning of 2023, so I think it kind of um, gives us a, a wrong impression about Mitchell's work at the moment because the gap between us and the first place is smaller, but at the same time, the gap between Olympiacos and I, for example, is bigger or at least the same compared to when Mitchell came. And we are kind of lucky that. It's not uh, Aik or Pauk that did the, the start that Panathinaikos did because otherwise it would have been very difficult to win like 10 points out of those two teams because... Uh, and, and I saw on Twitter a lot of people talking about Luchescu, uh, Lovell, like is he the best coach in Greece and stuff like that. But the only thing I would like to take from Luchescu to Olympiakos is the, the ability of create a team that is so fucking hard to to beat 
like Pauk is very, very hard to beat. And I don't see that from Olympiacos right now with Michel because Michel has improved a lot the mental level of this team. But it's really obvious to see that the players uh, have a stronger relationship uh, right now compared to the beginning of the season because the, it wasn't really a team. But it does not lead us anywhere. And I'm as Lambro said before, I, I don't want to be in that game in Tumba because I fear uh, a very difficult night for us. Like the, the night when we lost to Pau when they won the title, it was probably one of the the the, the not, not not the saddest but the the worst memory of the modern era because we could have lost like five nil maybe that game, and I don't want to live that again. So. Well. It, it, well, it was a very poor result. Uh, a lot of missed chances. Uh, Hamas missed quite a few chances. Uh, but the defense was shocking in this game. That's where I'm gonna. The, that's where I'm gonna focus. Basically, uh, there was just no. They, they weren't focused. Uh, some very poor mistakes. Alexandros Pasalakis was obviously furious, especially after the goal. Uh, some some very important warnings, I would say, ahead of the the big games that are coming, and the playoffs as well. I mean, obviously, Olympiacos are going to be in the playoffs, uh, but after the game against Ofi on Sunday, Olympiacos are playing there. I'm playing Pauk uh, on Saturday after that, if I remember correctly. That's going to be the first actual big match Olympiacos are going to play. Their first dar, the first actual derby they're going to play, a traditional derby. Uh, and uh, what we saw at Atromitos are major warnings of what lies ahead because Atromitos missed quite a few, quite a few sitters, quite a few important chances to score before their uh, their equalizer. Chances that it's hard to imagine Ike and Pauk and maybe Panathinaikos not missing. Uh, Olympiakos missed some very important, uh, some important chances that can they cannot afford to miss Atuba, which is going to be, uh, which is going to be on fire by the time they face Olympiakos. And, uh, and at Opapa Arena, where Ike are still undefeated, they cannot afford to miss those chances. Obviously, I mean, I'm, when it comes to Mitzel's wartime managerial reign at Olympiacos, for me, so far, the, the jury is out. It's a bit of a 50-50 because, yes, he did tidy things up. He did tidy things up as well uh, when it came to the roster. Olympiacos are undefeated so far this year. They haven't lost across all competitions, and I'm including friendlies since November against Nantes at Karaiskaki. Uh, and they haven't lost in the league since that October game against Pauk. So, yeah, it hasn't been... Uh, it, it has not been great because Olympiacos, again, they've been dropping important points. Uh, they, have, they, they have yet to, to, to win an actual big match. But it's obvious that there has been some work. Uh, some work has been done over there. But in general, like... When you look at Olympiacos and you're thinking, are they going to win the league? Well, what does a champion need, in my opinion? They need consistency, which means you cannot afford. Uh, you, you need to create a streak. You need to win the big matches, but you also need to win this, uh, against the, the, smaller, the, smaller, uh, the smaller competitors. And you also need medal, which Olympiacos don't seem to have it right now. Because when a, when a champion has medal, they make sure they're not going to drop uh, the, important, uh, the important points. When your rivals drop points... You make sure to capitalize uh, from that. Uh, so yeah, that's what I make uh, what I make out of that. Uh, Costa, I think we wanna we wanna move, we wanna we, we got a few things to say about James Rodriguez, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we can talk about James just uh, before we do. <laughs> we said before Christmas, every live we would ask this question, and it's in the poll. If you're following on YouTube, uh, make sure you. Answer the question, do you think we can win the league, yes or no? Uh, if you're live, hit yes or no. If you're following afterwards, leave us a comment, tell us what you think. Last time we went live, it was around 90% of you thought we could win the league. 90%. And now 55% saying yes, 45 saying no. It's quite amazing the psychology of Olympiacos fans, or Greek people, you could say, or whatever you want to call it, how quickly things can change. But just if we beat me, Pauk in two weeks, it's going to be 100%, percent will not it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, why, that's why I also like said before Christmas, I literally want to ask this question every time we go live because I want to see like how it fluctuates. 
Um, it was at a steady 80 to 90, and now it's back to the 50s. Uh, very, very close. And I, I was watching a bit the Onisis Velasquez show yesterday as well, and it was about 50, 60, 60 percent didn't didn't believe in it uh, yesterday night. Um, I just like you look all over before we get to Hammers, and you know, Hammers is a discussion point. Like it's just unsustainable, man. Like what's going on? Because you know, Costa, you said the manager's done some done some work, and yesterday we nearly ate a goal from a throw in, straight from a throw in. Would that have counted? A professional, yeah, of course it would. But a professional team doesn't eat a goal from a throw in. So like, what? What's going on? The goal yesterday as well is almost identical to the one that Adromito scored in the cup as well. Had a player just play a 35-yard ball in between our two centre-backs like it was nothing. What happens if Doi gets injured? What happens if Socrates gets injured? More likely. Cisse and Barr are like they don't exist. And we've got Retos who we don't know when he might get injured. Are we going to buy a centre-back? Nobody's been talking about us buying a centre-back this transfer window. Are we going to buy a striker now? El Arabi yesterday couldn't control the ball. He controlled the ball and it left his foot and went five metres to an opposition player. We talked about all of this in the summer. Do we need a striker now? Should we wait until the summer? Should we start playing young players? Okay, these are more sorry philosophical questions that maybe for some of you. But I look all over the park and there have been comments about the wingers. Who are our wingers? Gary Rodriguez, that's it. Masura is not a classic winger. We didn't want like Mitchell didn't want Josh Bowler. So now what? I don't know if you guys want to chip like feed off of what i just said before we no i, I think it. you're exactly right Costa. but it, it, it's also like the the transfers it seems like like this is the first january transfer window at olympiacos where it's like radio silence like uh nottingham forest bought danilo and they packaged him with ramon and they're like there's your left back and that's the only transfer we've gotten and it's like what the hell's going on? There's there's no transfers. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe they realize, okay, let's not panic. Shit's hit the fan. We have tons of low knees. We already have a big roster. Blah, blah, blah. But you have two wingers. They, they need to call up, maybe this sounds crazy, but like D.B. Keita or Alisic or one of these gotcha. young players to tra train with the team because fucking Mario's Versailles is not a professional footballer. Like the guy is horrible. The guy is just tragic. Like whatever he was as a footballer is gone. So, yeah, so but he has we... been playing as a fullback. Yeah, mostly. he's been playing as a fullback, but he can't wing. cross the ball. There at the end of the game. Yeah, like, but I wonder what kind of confidence he. I wonder what kind of confidence he has when he has been spending two years playing out of position for managers that clearly didn't believe him in it. Yeah, him enough. so he should leave, man. Like I, I don't get well, why he's here. You know, it's like well, it's well, also with Cisse and Ba. Like, what are they doing here? Like, it's January twenty third, and they're just like not in the match day squad, or not even match day squad. They're not even in the mission to the game. You know, like so. You you think to yourself, Costa's point about the central defender is so clear too. Carlo Hieropoulos is he's gone in July because he he's seen the writing on the wall and he's gone. So it's like. If Doi, remember how we destroyed Agibu? What is Agibu Camara now? Like, not worth anything, not in the well, match day he, squads because he, he burned out. That Copa Africa as well. He was Copa Africa, Copa Africa Costa, as but, well, though. But let's be honest, he got burned out by Martins because he was a 17, 18 year old who'd never played professional football and then played 40 games nonstop. Doi, he wasn't even playing football. And then Michel pulled him along and was like, okay, you're in the squad. And he's been playing football nonstop for three or four months. He he hasn't played professional football. This is his first year. He could burn out. He could get injured, like Costa said. Or he could just, like, stop performing as well because he gets burnt out. Like, Agi Bukamara and the fans turn on him. And then what do we have? We have nothing. So if we're not going to sign players, which may be smart, because we have Henry, we have Zinker Nago, we have all these players on loan. We have Hassan even on loan. I think you need to, to to bring people, and this isn't even me saying like Olympiacos doesn't play young players, but like just from looking at the squad, you need to bring these people up, 
right? Like just from depth reasons, we've gone from having a massive squad to having no depth almost. Like Kasami is not depth to me. Like Kasami is damn near not a professional footballer either. So it's it's a it's a mess on that front, you know? It's 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 a real mess. I don't know. Well, there are a lot of questions regarding the transfer market. I mean, basically the January transfer market those completely different than the summer transfer market because the January transfer market is supposed to exist for tweaks, not to build yourself a team that's going to win course. the title or avoid relegation. You just need to make tweaks. Uh, so in that aspect, it makes sense that uh, they're not going for a winger, for a striker, for a midfielder, for a center back, for a for a fullback, for a no, goalkeeper. No, no, no. But I, I'm not. I'm not asking for that whatsoever. But it's just it's like basics, you know. If you don't want, jo you got rid of De La Fuente, you got rid of Conrad, you got rid of. Basically, oh, no. we, we Joe is gone. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, like, do you replace these people? I guess not. I guess the squad was just poorly constructed and too big, so you just do not replace them. But but the worry is just, you know, what, where are we going with this, you know? We have so many fragile... This is what I mean. The puzzle Michel has built is so fragile. And, and the shit... The absolute shit we watched three months ago is not gone. It could come back, you know? Like, we are feeling this sense of confidence, I think, beating fucking Volos, which is a joke of a team, and, and whatever. And now it's coming back to reality. Like, oh, shit, no, we still cannot be past Yanina on the road or Atromitos on the road. We can barely beat Aris. Like, this is going to get fucking bad when we start playing the big teams you know that, well, that's my opinion that's like realization for olympiacos fans are starting to sit in like oh shit we have been living in dreamland like shit is about to hit the fan real fast here you know what i mean like when we go to pauk we could suffer massive did you see what they did to panathina of course on the road like we're gonna go there with like james rodriguez who can barely walk and like beat them are you you know what I mean? Like, I, I, well, yeah. I mean, obviously, Olympiacos started the second start, the second, the second half of the season completely different to Panathinaikos, of course. But I want to bring Martial in because uh, we haven't heard from him for for quite a while. Uh, Martial, what kind of warnings do you think the uh, uh, the the Atromitos flop has for the upcoming derby against Pauk? Well, I think the main one is that we are still a weak team uh, in defense because. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the the main thing that apart from the, the winter market uh, uh, that kind of worries me, but as you say, Costa, I'm not expecting anything from the winter market because it, it, it's supposed to be a market to correct what you don't have on the squad. But uh, it's I think it's better not to bring anyone rather than to bring like five, six more players because we also have to start to, to think about the summer. And that's why the only position that would bring a player in would be probably a centre-back, like a semi-like centre-back that would be helpful for the summer, even if we don't win the title. And also a winger because it's an obvious need for the team. Uh, but the, the, the main thing that... Uh, the, ma the main reminder of this draw is that we cannot afford not to have more mobile players in the midfield, as uh, Lambros said before, because the team, the team is very slow. And I, I, I see just two options if we want to give more speed to the team is either play Samaseku in the midfield or Hazer play Samaseku maybe and uh, Agibu in the same team, like taking out of 10 and putting Hagibu just up front the midfield because he's the one that can run the most in the midfield, like running from the attack to the defense, like he did in Ofi, for example. Uh, but I, I, I don't think it will happen, unfortunately, for Hagibu. But I think Mitchell has to start Samasiku in Tumba because otherwise, I'm not really eager to see the three tens uh, lineup in Tumba because it could end up very bad, very bad. Like with the informed players they have, like Oliveira, he started to picking up confidence. With Zivkovic, he's coming back after the World Cup and the f a very poor first half of season. And they play with confidence. 
we also play with confidence, but it's it, it not. It's very hard to see that when you see Olympiacos playing right now. And the Marcio, atmosphere... Of... It's, it's almost like when Olympiacos went to Pauk the first year of Martins. What was it like? They played 4-2-3-1 yeah. with like it Bipar, lo- Nacho it, it, or something and we yeah, died. It, it, we got It was suffered, lost before suffered. playing. Like When yeah. the team entered to the pitch, I remember, we, you could see that it was going, going to end up badly because... Going to Tumba and win it on the field, it's it requires more than than a, like football level. Obviously, you all know that better than me because I'm not following Greek football uh, since ages. But it's obvious that if we win there, it changes everything. No matter the how badly we play, if we if we snatch a victory like the one we snatched with the, I think it was Yanulis' mm-hmm. own goal uh, on the. Rangelovic cross. Rangelovic, yeah. Yeah. Which, which is a, a profile that we miss on the team, by the way. But that's another topic. Well, Aris is not joining us, uh, but is not joining us tonight, but he is joining us in spirit. We've got some stats here that are made, that are put together by Aris. Uh, Costa, do you want to take us through them? Yeah, no, I just, uh, I'll pick up off what Marshall was saying as well uh, about, uh, about the three tens. And one thing I wanted to say, there's a comment in there that we haven't spoken about. Mitchell, the the, the toy boy of Sidagma, someone in the chat is is calling him. Someone uh, who has a very a very a very uh, a very yeah. distinctive surname. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I said my I said my words about Mitchell at the beginning of the show. But one one thing that I that, that occurred to me earlier in the day was that we've gone from a team that Olympiacos fans complained was really like hard to watch like not easy on the eye like not any creative players too many players that are good at running yeah uh, this is how martins was playing pretty much all of last season how he started building the team in preseason we didn't have we didn't play with tens right and we didn't have any wingers that could really break down a defense create big opportunities etc and now we've gone from that to saying we're going to play with three tens so that we can be more creative and get, you know, get more out of our technical players. And then you look at this, you look at this that's on your screen, yesterday's game against Atromitos with three tens and our XG is lower than Atromitos with 66% possession. What does that mean? means we couldn't break them down with three of our most creative players on the team. Why is that? Because what Labro said earlier, because what we've been talking about, there are no dynamic players. There are no fast players to stretch the opponents. Uh, We don't have players that can run at people. So, you know, that that kind of brings us neatly to this discussion about about the the three tens. And, And even... I, I, I don't care if people think what I'm about to say is bullshit, but, but uh, James Rodriguez, if we could give him to Galatasaray now, is not sustainable. I'm sorry. And like, don't, don't get me wrong. Like I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to disrespect the, the, the player, like the quality and, We'll look at we'll look at the stats in a moment, but he can't move. He can't. Like you, you thought he was starting to build up some fitness before Christmas, and then I think he got injured going into the winter break, and he hasn't hasn't really been the same. Like you in Labrador, you talked about modern football. James Rodriguez in modern football, in the like in a Champions League game. Or European game, you have to build like you have to be like committed to say I'm going to build a team around James Rodriguez and I'm going to put all the pieces in around him to get the best out of him. Is that what we want to do? I don't know how much money he's getting, but I, I, one, one last thing I'll say about, about this: I feel like James Rodriguez is getting special treatment right now from the club. Um, he pulled a bit of a hissy fit a few games ago when uh, when he came off as a substitute. Didn't seem to like it. And since then, 
he's been playing 90 minutes. He made, I think, a couple of games ago, he got subbed off around the 80th minute after Fortunis and Biel. Is it Mitchell trying to keep him happy? It seems he's trying to keep all those three players happy, him in particular. Is it worth it in the long run? I don't know. I'm really like, if I had to pull the plug, if I had a choice, I'm pulling the plug. I'm really surprised you say it, Costa, like, because I have the same opinion and I thought we would disagree on this because I just don't think in modern football you can play James Rodriguez at a high level. Long like, term, long, sorry, long term, Labro. I think long like, term. I think like for this season, he's like, he's a quality player, man. With one action, he'll give an assist. He'll score a goal. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. And, and he's this, done that and, last and, game. And, and last game Greece, the goal against Addis. It, it is Greece. Addis, was a hammer's it, it, cross. Is Greece high level though? No. And what I'm trying to say, Costa, what are we trying to build here? We're trying to build a club that can go to the Champions League in the summer. And like, I, that's the thing I struggle. I think about some of the European games, higher level European games already back has played. Could this James Rodriguez have played against Atalanta and kept up the pace and played? There is no way for me he could play. So when we signed James, I remember um, Themis Kessaris made a podcast and he's like, would Olympiacos sign James Rodriguez or signed Pep Biel if they had signed James Rodriguez? No. It was clear that James Rodriguez came because he was available. And the thing I will say about James is he reminds me seriously of Mesut Ozil at the end of Arsenal. Do you remember this time a bit? where he had the falling out with Mikel Arteta and he's like, I'm Mesut Ozil. I had all the assists. But the thing was Mesut Ozil just like doesn't have a place in modern elite level football. And he went off to Fenerbahce at the end of Arsenal and he massively flopped because it's just players like this just do not work at competitive high level football unless your team's built around them. And so, and there's just a sense that the guy is, of what you hinted at, like he's bigger than the club and we have to sort of play to Hamas, but the player's fantastic. He has a huge CV, but it's just, it's absurd. I think that we're just like kind of moving the whole team towards him. Um, and, and I agree if, if Galatasaray came and offered a few million euros, I would, I would move him on too, because I think this is going to sound insane. BL, I think, is better for Olympiacos long term than James Rodriguez ever will. And I would much rather see Pep BL play it at the 10 spot with serious wingers next to him and being supported. Because Pep BL is a player you could see playing for Olympiacos in a big game against, like, let's say Pep BL was in the position Mathieu Valbuena was when we played Tottenham Hotspur in that second season under under Martins. Martins. I could see him play that. Could James Rodriguez play that? He doesn't have the... You'd be playing with 10 men against Tottenham Hotspurs. You would get completely destroyed. I... Anyway, I, I, I just... to just, I'm looking at it more... Just more long-term and, and watching the player. And I, I just don't think him and Olympiacos are the match. I just... For what oh. I want to see from Olympiacos, which is an Olympiacos that can go back to the Champions League and that can compete and play with big teams. I think the man we see on the graphic right here, Pep Biel, is that man. And I think a similar discussion can be happened about Fortunis as well and Fortunis's role. And I think Fortunis needs to accept a smaller role than he has right now, whether that's being on the bench, coming off the bench, or playing in the next significant games and letting Pep Biel develop into the 10 for Olympiacos. That's my opinion. Well, it That's is a very difficult discussion, of course. I mean, it's James a tough so discussion. Far, James so far has three goals and three assists in 14 games. That's almost he creates one goal every two games. I mean, that's not stellar. But then you look at Pep Biel, you look at Costas Fortuns, you look at Cedric Bacambu, you look at Huang. Uh, especially the first three are major goal providers for the team. So it's not like James is the guy who is supposed to do it. What do you make out of the whole thing, Martial? Well, I kind of agree with uh, Costa and Lambros because if the choice is to be made between those three players, there is no doubt that for Olympiacos, the best solution long term is Pep Biel because he has played back to back game in Europe uh, 
for the last years and i think it it can be it can be the typical player that that reach his peak with olympiacos like plays in the use in the in the champions league for two three season and then he starts to to decline and goes back to to spain because it's obvious is not made to reach a better league like playing in england italy spain france or stuff like that but if you give him if you give him a um a, a real wingers around him a more mobile striker for example someone like Kuipers, uh, if if we want to have someone that was f- that played for olympiacos in mind but it could be any other striker on the market if you give him uh probably rodine on the on the right and let's see a real left back a more offensive left back on the left it could change the whole team and I I love Fortunis. I respect what it is for Olympiacos, but there's no room for Fortunis if we speak about big games of Olympiacos, big games in Europe and big games in Greece because he's reliable to to score against, uh, for example, Yanina. I think he scored in Yanina. Uh, in the in, in if we had Fortunis earlier in the season, maybe we wouldn't have draw against Volos at Kareskakis, for example, the draw in Tripoli, those are the game in which I expect Fortunis to make a difference. And uh, for Rames, I think it will be like Marcelo. I mean, like a one, one season shot. And we will, not, we, will have, we will have to purge, I mean, to purge the mistake we, we've made last summer. And unfortunately for, for Rames, I think it it, it will be he won't re- renew because if Rames renew uh, the, with the wage he has, it, it's probably a limitation on the market for us because I don't know the the wage he has currently, but I assume it's uh, it's large. Yeah. yeah, we went we went as I said earlier in the season. We went goddamn near full Turkish baby. Like we went full like big name, big CV, big <clears> salary. <throat> And maybe that's the reason the club can't make signings this window. When you're paying Marcelo 4 million euros and he like literally just goes on vacation to Madrid whenever he wants. Okay, I know he was injured. I know he was injured but before people go crazy. But you're paying Hamas the same amount of money. You're Like, it, it really restricts the amount you can do when you're paying big, big money. You paid 7 million euros for freaking Pep BL. You know, like... Yeah. I, I really would have been keen to see what Pep Biel would have been. He hasn't even played where he's played, like, historically. He scored double digits, goals, assists, double digits at Copenhagen behind the striker. Looks amazing, and he's playing on the wing for us to facilitate James Rodriguez. But he's um, still doing very well. Like, I mean, the, the he's con- still the doing well. The is amazing. I know some people don't like Pep Biel for some reason, but... Because they don't know football. Yeah, but I, I, I really do like the player. And I when I think, what do we need to do to get Olympiacos back to the next step? It is fucking getting rid of these big name, big CVs. Because the, I know we may see beautiful moments and highlights every now and then. But you know what I mean? Like, sometimes these players just... Like Marcelo and James Rodriguez, it makes Olympiacos a bigger brand globally. But... When the going gets tough, it's like tough. we care about yeah. followers more than building the football team. Exactly, it, it just Sorry, doesn't I'm make sense football wise. It, it doesn't make say. sense. And but, like, what do you reckon? Like, can I just address the BL point? Because okay, some people in the chat are saying, um, "Like, is are you seriously suggesting to build a team around BL?" No, I'm not saying to build a team around anyone. I'm saying to build a team. And I'm he's not softer we, than Versailles. It's like guys, guys, we spent we spent six million on this guy in the summer. He's twenty six years old. What potential does what potential does James Rodriguez have versus Pep Biel? Isn't Pep that Biel is a even, luxury? Is a, he has no place in the Greek league, Pep Biel, because he's too good. It's not even and it got got that. I can I can agree with some people. Like Marshall and I talk about this. Like well, we talk about this in the chat. Like Pep Biel so far probably hasn't justified his price tag. I didn't do didn't do much in Europe for us, but then again, like I mean, Who we did? were a, Who did? 
we were a complete shambles. Like exactly. no one did anything for us in Europe. So but I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, that Costa. Sorry to interrupt you, but like here we're talking about a guy who scored six goals and and, and created three assists. Made it. And no, no, I'm matches. trying to. That's I'm, out of position as well. Like that's, no, no, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. No, like, I, I'm no, no, I just want to bring it up. Yeah, of course, I know. I'm playing. Dev, I'm playing devil's advocate too. I'm just trying to see the other side of this because, like, we we did an episode a while back, and I said, Pep Biel could be the next Zinkenagel. When uh, when James Rodriguez came in, he's been played out of position. Like, how are you going to fit all these players? You've paid six million for this guy, and you're not going to like play him where he's most effective. And you're going to play a guy that's going to be here for at best a season, and then go somewhere else. That's that's the thing. That's why I choose BL out of those three. Don't get me wrong. Like, if James Rodriguez had two proper wingers on either side of him. And you know, um, a, a really good, like fast, mobile, strong six a defensive midfielder and Huang. Maybe you know it would be it'd be fantastic for us this season. But, that, but we don't have that. We don't have that. We try to fix the issues on the roster late in the summer by drawing in players like that to say we signed a marquee name. And we'll remember the goal that Hammers scored with his left foot the other week from outside the box. We'll remember some no-look passes and we'll be able to say, you know, down the line, our oh, Hammers Rodriguez played for us for a season or Marcelo's played for us for a season. But what did our team achieve that season or this season that we're talking about? Maybe nothing. It looks like nothing. I, I, I'll be very glad to be proven wrong. At let the end of the let him prove us wrong. Let him go to Tumba and play, and let's see. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's see Hamas go to Tumba and play. That's. I I I I just think it's I I personally I just hate these signings to be honest. I like hate the like big name, bam, fucking. I don't like the team could have signed like Ronaldo and I wouldn't be happy. Like I because when I watch modern football, when I watch teams I like. The, the teams that are successful in Europe that are more on our level do not make stupid signings like this. They just like do not like could James Rodriguez make a team in a similar level as us better in the short term? Yes, but he you, does, does that make sense at all? Like what, what like a Dutch team would never sign James Rodriguez. A Dutch team would never sign Marcelo. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. And you they're know, selling Cody Gakpo for 45 million euros to Manchester yeah. United. And they're selling other players be because it just makes no sense for them. Like, why would they you, do that? But anyway, You always say that we went full Turkish. And I often watch Galatasaray, which, it's, which is at the top of the Turkish league, if I'm correct. And you, you know who's the best players they brought this summer. It's not Juan Mata. It's not, like, not even Mertens. It's Torreira in the midfield, which is the best player of Galatasaray because it's always not the big name that turns out to be the best player. Um, that's where probably we made a mistake. We, we needed a big name that is really ready to play back-to-back -back games. And also on the debate about the tens, I don't think we have to choose between the three. I, I mean, the, the real choice would be between James and Bill because... Fortunis won't complain if uh, he has to come off the bench and not start games. Like I mean, he understood that he won't have any better club than Olympiacos right now. He won't have any better contract than the one he has right now, even with the pay cut he had to take this summer. So it, it won't be a problem. I, it, it never was a problem for the club. He will accept any role in this team. Uh, but... Uh, Concerning Rames and and Pep Biel, I, I, as you say, Lambro, at the game in Tuba will be an answer because this is in this we we expect from them both of them to be decisive in these kind of games because they probably cost with the wage and the fee of Biel half the price of the pay of the squad, so it's up to them to make the difference right now. Yeah. But, Costa, can I ask you a question? Anything you like, my man. 
are the pe- so are the Hammers Rodriguez and Marcelo issues really different? Are the, what do you mean? For, like for me, the only difference is that like Marcelo plays left back, hmm. like he plays in defence. But otherwise, you're talking about two players that, like, technically, they're absolute magic, like, when they're on the ball. They can do things with the ball that nobody else on on the roster can do. We've seen it. We have seen it from them uh, against the the, the goals Marcelo scored against Adromitos, the goals and the assists that James has, has given. But the difference is that I'm arguing Mar- the difference is that Marcelo plays in a position where you can't afford to not be able to run. And there was a there was a comment about um from from Outlaw Jorge. If there's one player that wanted to win yesterday, it was Hammers. He's not satisfied with our form, which is understandable. And do you know what? Um I think I think to a large extent I agree with that comment. I think he really tried. No, he did. Like he, the best chances we had yesterday were from him. But there's a difference between one and can. And can he? I think we'll see it in Dubba in a couple of weeks. That's well, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think. Marcelo, I mean. Yeah, but I don't think Marcelo and James's only difference is the position. Because I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's obvious that James has contributed a, a, tremendously more than Marcelo. Marcelo cannot play 90 minutes. He cannot play the big games. Can when Hamas plays, play 90 minutes? In, he's got, he has played 90 minutes. He, he has, played, but can he? he has, like, you he watch him, played, like, barely let, be able to walk. Let me, let me, go let, on, me go let me get to it. Go on. He has, we're talking about James and Marcelo. We're not com- comparing James Rodriguez with Bruno Fernandes. We're com- it's, it's Marcelo and James we're talking about right now. He has contributed massively compared to, uh, to Marcelo. Like I said, six uh, six goals. Uh, how, how much was it? Uh, three goals, three assists in 14 games. That's contributing one goal per two games in a team that has many, many uh, other goal contributors. Uh, obviously, past his best. Both of them are are, are past his be- are past their best. But Hamza has been a lot more reliable than Marcelo considering what the manager has been asking for. And basically, Olympiacos right now, guys, if all four of us are amazing chefs that have our own little technique of how to how, how to bake an apple pie, if I start baking the apple pie, but I quit halfway, Labros takes over, he quits halfway, Marcial goes, he quits, and, La, and, Costadino, and Costas finishes it, all of us with our own technique, it's going to be a shit apple pie because we all just, we're, we're, we're doing a little bit there's no, uh, it makes no sense. Different, uh, different recipes, different styles. It's going to be shit. That's what Olympiacos is right now. I would like to. Try it. <laughs> Sorry? Sorry, I'd still like to try it. Yeah. Well, at your own, <laughs> at your own risk, at your own risk. Yeah. Those are that's Olympiacos fans. Like I'm still game to try. You know. Like, <laughs> which they are. Which they are. Which they are. Talk to the season ticket holders. Yeah, they're like, Obviously, fuck it, I'm game. Like, uh, sounds like Mar- it'll taste different than the usual one. Marcelo yeah. and James were part of this. We're part. Of, we're brought in as impression signings to get the fans hyped. Like, yeah, we're out of Europe. We got dicked by Maccabi Haifa, but you know what? We'll do it. You know, because we got Marcelo. We got James right now. Yeah. But yeah, I do believe there's a difference between James and Marcelo. There is a lot of disappointment there, but comparing James to compared to Marcelo, James has contributed a lot more. But still, like they're not the same bomb transfers as as uh, Darko Kovacevic was, Giovanni was, Rivaldo was, etc. But I, I will say something. You know, if I'm the boss and I'm paying four million euros a year for Marcelo and James, like I want them to be the players to beat to win the game in Tumba, you know, like yeah. I, I, I want those players to be the ones who can take the team and lift them to the next level. I assume that's what the owner of Galatasaray thought when he signed Mario Riccardi, who can't play. He's like, comes off the bench for Galatasaray. He's like, oh, he's I the want best this scorer. guy to, he, he wants, I want him to beat Fenerbahce. Okay. He has the best score. I don't give a shit. Like the guy's washed, but anyway, um, <sighs> Like they're big names, they're exciting, but I, the the best signing for me for Olympiacos this year it goes Huang and it goes Biel. Like those are the signings I want. Players twenty five and low. I think maybe Juan's a bit older, but.
but you know, like I can, I know I can go to war with Huang for sure. You know, PL to be decided, but I, I, I feel comfortable. BL scored against Panathinaikos in the big game, you know, like away from home. Like, let, let's sure. not forget that. Um, like, I want to go to war with those guys. I don't want to go to war with fucking people who walk constantly and that are overweight and have a big CV just because, you know? <sighs> yeah. Nadia Seven Hooligans. No, we're not from America. Not all of us, anyway. Big up my Belgium crew. We've got Frenchmen from France. We got Greek man in England, sometimes, sometimes in Greece. Labro is, I don't even know where you are now, mate. Are you in North America? I'm in Seattle. He's in Seattle. So we're from everywhere. Olibiagos fans, not just in Greece, we're all Greek. Even Martial, who's not Greek, but but he's an honorary Greek. Aren't you, Martial? <laughs> anyway, yeah, guys, um, shout out. If you're new, welcome to Gate 7 International, where your number one English source for all things Olibiagos, international channel following all things Olibiagos. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button if you haven't. It's been fun so far, isn't it? Where... where... Yeah. Where to next, guys? Leave <sighs> comments, ask more questions. Well, I mean, I don't think we have completely though covered the whole three, uh, the whole th um, number, t the whole three number tens thing. Because uh, I mean, I mean, my question is, can 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 Olympiacos play like this in the big games against Pauk, Panathinaikos, and Nike? No. They're going to have eight derbies in the playoffs. The answer is, of course, no, because they're, they're, there's not enough dynamic. They need more dynamic players. They need somebody to break in, uh, break, break in the box from the from the wing, somebody to, to create a cross, somebody to, uh, to 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 win a few one v one v ones. I don't think this works with the with, in the big games, and also. If Olympiacos, let's say, bring a good winger in there, who do you drop? Fortunis is the clear maybe. one. No, Fortunis is the one who gets subbed at 45. Okay, I, I, I'm not saying who should be, but that's who I think Michel's like odd man out. Fortunis has been subbed at 45 two games in a row now. So, But who should be? I think who should be is a better question. Fuck me, too. Like, if I may, I think... What really worries me is I thought yesterday, I thought yesterday Mitchell would start with two of the tens, not the three. I was quite surprised that he went for it, given what we saw in the last few games. Um, what worries me is that I think we should go into like the Balk game, for example, with Samaseku. M. Villa, Juan, kind of midfield, but we've never he, like he's never tried it. So I don't believe I don't believe he will like out of nowhere go to Duba and say, "Do you know what? I'm going to start Samaseku in midfield with Juan, and I'm going to try and press them high up the field." Because Balk is a team for me. They're the best team in Greece playing the ball out the back. Ajax are really good at pressing teams up the field. They've got a mobile midfield. They can press teams. But Balk can play out the back. And you need to press them. If you go to Balk with three tens and no press, it could get real ugly real fast. So I think a comment came up. 4-3-3 in Dubba. Is yeah. the solution. Samaseku in. He's got legs. I think Agibu Kamara is going to be loaned out. And I think I mean he's not he's not in any match day squads. So that's what I would that's what I would do, but I'm worried he won't do it. He's but what's he done in the big games though? He goes four, two, three, one, drops one of the tens for Masuras. He did that against Panathina. Of course, I think he did the same for Ike. Ad, Ad Michel is, is not a genius. I think he'll do the same thing. That, like that was that was before that was before Christmas though, wasn't that it? That was before Christmas. So maybe he has like a new idea in his head, but like I don't think he's that sophisticated. I think the game with Aris will be interesting on Wednesday. Maybe if he goes with that system that you just described, then I think that's the shout. But I'm pretty confident 
if he goes Wednesday with those three tens, we're, we may go out of the cup on Wednesday night, and I think that's disaster. So let's it, see. It, he needs to start Samasiku anyway. I mean, it's to me, it's the the biggest uh, unspoken issue of Olympiakos, even if it's quite spoken right now, because it's getting clear that he's, he's a player that has way more than the level to start for Olympiakos. But it's just, when he came in, I remember when he came in September, he, he, he came like super late and it was announced after... The, the big names, so it, it went quite unnoticed, but it's just surprising to let the players like to let a player like that out of the team. And, but he's the probably the one that can do what Madi Kamara was able to do in a 4 3 3. I mean, playing as a six, as an eight, and even as a 10 if needed. Like, he's the player that has the, the I don't know how to say that, the, the, athletic level to do those runs and it's start it's it's the time it's time to start using his abilities otherwise we're gonna reg regret that yeah for all of you who are just tuning in uh please like and subscribe if you like what you're watching if you want more please do like and subscribe smash that like button spread the word we are gate seven international for the fans, by the fans. Uh, <clears throat> we keep growing. The community keeps growing. We're going to be bringing you some more exclusive interviews, some more exclusive news, and constant uh, content, constant stats uh, from uh, exclusive providers. So please, please uh, keep following us. And if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. I mean, this has been a very uh, difficult match. Uh, the, 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 it has been very difficult to... Uh, to take anything uh, out of this match, but okay, guys, I gotta ask you, man, man, man of the match and coach is great. I'll start off alphabetically with uh, Costa with the C. <laughs> Tough one after a game like that, but for me, Rodney, mm -hmm. I thought I thought you know he's the only player that gave us any width yesterday. Um, if I had to pick anyone, probably him, to be honest. But but it's it's hard, like. Who do you pick in a drab game like that? I, I I like I like what I've been seeing from him since he joined, and you know, let's see him the next the next few games on Wednesday, starting on Wednesday against Addis and Balk next week. Hell, even Offie on the weekend. Like so far, so good. It's looking like a good signing, and I like the energy that he brings. Like he's very very adept, like on the ball. And um, I, I like I like what I've seen from him so far. And coach is great. Yeah, F. F, all the changes. All the changes were wrong. See, even Spanulis agrees. Like, Spanulis <laughs> that yeah, was so like, quick. That was so quick. Yeah. I loved it. Very yeah, but I, I mean, it's very um, it's very interesting that you mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, Rodine because Olympiacos just bought another fullback on the other side who's also Brazilian named Ramon. And Aris has done an amazing... Uh, deep dive guys you should definitely go and check it out it's uh it's pinned on our twitter page if i'm not mistaken you gotta check it out on facebook it's on instagram as well it's on our youtube channel definitely have a look at it i mean what do you make of that costa the ramon signing yes <laughs> how many 20 21 year old left backs do we have uh, Two that's of them the fourth, if i'm not mistaken you got Doran Leidner, who just went out on loan to Kitsos. Austria. So the Vienna. third one, a third one, and maybe some of them had him as well. Kitsos and this guy, and then okay, if you can throw Apostolopoulos in there for fun as well, but uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, man. Like the the guys played half a season professional football in Brazil. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. And if Ole Grabchuk leaves, then we need to sign another left back. For me. But you know, with, with any... Oleg's uh, replacement, I don't. It's even worse. <laughs> I don't, Lato, I don't think... baby, last day he's coming. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I think either Reabchuk stays, probably like likeliest scenario. I think he stays. Um, but like like any transfer, the the pitch is always the best judge. Like you have to see him on the pitch. Makes sense. Labro, man of the match and coach is great. 
I literally don't. I I, I want to say Radine, but I will say Bakambu for the goal because I, I, I like everyone was so mediocre. I I don't know. Um, and then yeah, I would give an F for the coaching grade regarding Ramon. I feel like I can't say anything about a Brazilian league left back who's 22 was playing on loan. Like I have no idea. All I know is it was a package deal with Danilo from Nottingham Forest, and that's how we got him. So let's see. I think let's see. When I watch three minute highlights, he feels quite. He looks like quite stiff, like straight line, quick, but he's like. So I just did do a little bit of judgment, but I want to see. Go and watch the deep dive. It's really good. Really yeah. good. And, and I feel like good. Adi is a bit pessimistic on him as well. So let's see. Anyway. And <laughs> what do you yeah, think? I would give, I give. I, of course. I give uh, Michel, yeah, honestly, like an F too. Yeah, that Versailles sub at the end was like the shittiest sub I've ever seen in my life. That was Samaseku on in the 84th minute. <laughs> that was one of the worst. <laughs> to do what? <laughs> that was tragic anyway yeah it was a real f like that was one of the worst coach games i think i've ever seen ever at olympiacos like one of the worst anyway can i like because i said earlier i don't want to shit on him the entire time but i agree with this <laughs> comment too and it's not like have you noticed in the press conferences like they've brought it up before about mitchell being like answering whether he's a diahiristis or whether he's a he's a real man like a real coach and he's in his press conferences he brings it up now like proactively, it's quite funny. Like, I get the guy's got great charisma, but like, I do agree with his comment. And some people were saying this, like, right when we brought him in, he'd be a fantastic kind of, I don't know, technical director, even you might call him, was just someone that plays that He's role. He's like a better version of Karambe almost. Like, could like, be. He could be could like be. a Karambe. Like, come on, dude. Like, after the summer, hopefully he can leave amicably and just be like, Carambe 2.0, like, go around the world. I'm an old Real Madrid legend. I work for Olympiacos, whatever, you know. Martial, match is uh, man of the match. And will we have another F? Yeah, it will be an F for me because, <laughs> because of the subs. And I say it because we are in the, in the position in which we don't have the choice Uh uh, we, we we have to play the best players uh, as most as possible. Of course, we we don't have the Euro we don't have any European competition to play in in midweek. So it's supposed to give us a small lead compared to the to the other team in Greece because we do have the quality. And also, I I kind of think that it reminds me sometimes Martins at the end, like the five subs starts to be a weakness for Olympiacos because the bench is not that good. Like the depth is not that huge. So you can't bring in uh, Vrusai, uh, Masuras with the form he has right now, Rodriguez, which is a gamble at every game. Uh, I mean, at the same time, five subs at the same time is too much. The team is already weak, so you you, 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 you just get the team weaker after that. And the match of the man of the match will be Rodine because because I think I appreciate the fact that he came ready. Uh, he came ready, and that's why I was uh, optimistic about the potential uh, arrival of Suazo from uh, Colo Colo because he has played a full season before, and we can see the, differ the difference with Rodine. Like, he came after a full season with Flamengo, and he's, he's ready. I mean, he's... He needed no time to be fit. He needed no time to settle in the team. And we can see his quality. And I'm, I, I see that if I, I can uh, see that it will be useful in the summer for the qualifier. And that's why I'm, I'm giving him the man of the match because it doesn't matter the game itself. It's just more about the, the, the fact that he, he came ready and he showed that. Well, uh... For me personally, I mean, I look at it has been so difficult to actually figure out a man of the match. So I did something I do when I'm in this position, whether it's professionally or just for a hobby. According to Sofa Score, Andreas Janjotis was the best, uh, was the man of the match. James Rodriguez was the second best overall, best uh, player for Olympiaco, 7.6 out of 10. Bakambu uh, coming second at 7.2. I don't agree James Rodriguez was the man of the match, personally. I would give it to either Bakambu or Rodine. I want to give it to Rodine because 
he is offering a sense of security we haven't seen since Omar El Abdelawi left. The, the right back position of Olympiacos has been so bad it almost became a meme. Uh, let's see with the left back position with this, with another 21 year old coming in. What could go wrong? Uh, good, really good runs. Another composed performance. He even came close to scoring. Uh, almost got that important touch after uh, a ball from the left, uh, but uh, it was saved by an Atromitos uh, defender. So yeah, I'm going to give it to Rodine. Uh, and yeah, when it comes to coaches, great. I'm not going to go for an F. The only reason is because he didn't lose, so it's going to be a C minus because the because the coaching has been absolutely out, it, it was outrageous. Bringing on Samaseku this late, I will never understand what he doesn't see on Samaseku. Uh, very very poor performance, uh, no chemistry against a very poor side, and that Olympiacos actually proved they are they are really poor in the cup game when they easily got rid of them. Uh, Obviously, a lot of other teams have dropped points at Peristeri, but then again, you are Olympiacos. You have so much quality in the team. Uh, this has been very, uh, this has been very disappointing, and uh, well, makes you wonder about the games ahead. So yeah, it's going to be a C minus only because Olympiacos didn't lose. So guys, do we have anything else to add? As we have gone through over an hour, I have something to add pers personally, guys. Uh, we're almost uh, we're, we're closing in on three thousand subscribers. We would love it if you became our 3,000 subscri subscribers. So please uh, click that subscribe button, smash the like button, because uh, it helps grow this community, uh, this, uh, uh, this special, commu this special uh, international community for Olympiacos. As I said, exclusive interviews are coming up, exclusive content. Uh, we bring you stats daily of, uh, of how Olympiacos are doing in this extremely a peculiar and complicated season with uh, the most exciting playoffs coming I mean, the most exciting playoffs in greek football history coming up so please if you uh if you want to keep joy if you want to keep uh, keep going with us in this journey please subscribe guys what do we have to add you're uh, you're on mute costa buy us a beer if you like because you you can't buy us a beer because we're not in the same place but if you would like to leave a donation by all means that helps everything we do is out of pocket guys um yeah we do have we do thank sponsors like um bet us check that out if you're a betting guy as well betus.com.pa you can find that in the description below you get 125 percent increase on your first deposit and they have really good odds compared to the other ones like sticky man that you use in greece or bet365 the odds that you find on betus.com are much more interesting highly recommend having a look at that and you can use the promo code use the promo code to get your 125 percent deposit as i said uh, those kinds of sponsorships are helpful but all those graphics that you see on our instagram on our socials the videos that we make uh everything is everything we do is out of pocket guys so Every little bit helps if you'd like to leave a donation as well. Um, really great to be back. Be another important game on Wednesday. And I guess I guess we'll be we'll be back after that. Hopefully. Guys, anything to add? You know, just hopefully we win on Thursday. Because if it's any other result, shit's gonna hit the fan. So Please. Well, I have I have heard that the game is on Wednesday, but I have heard that if we reach 3,000 followers, Labros is going to have a special rant about the season overall. <laughs> is that another right? one? The room, another one? Room? Do I have another one in the fucking pocket? God, it's been there's been quite a few this season. So let's see. I heard rumors. I heard things. Anything to add, Martial? Well, I just saw that Florian Tovin has been officially released from Tigres in Mexico. And I think he could be that's a bam. Uh, a good opportunity for Olympiacos because he, he has a very uh, stereotype playing style. Like it's like if he was compared uh, to Robin in France because he always go back with the left foot and shoot. Obviously, he doesn't have the same quality, but it could be uh, a huge opportunity for the club that doesn't require to bring five players. How old is he That's now? 29. 
yeah, 29. 29. He's a winger for anyone who doesn't know. Marshall, you have to you have to do something like as an OM fan and like with your connections yeah. in France, make some calls, get to Van. To the... <laughs> I, I wonder if he's not eager to go back to France, but uh, why not? I'm I'm afraid that after the 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 failed experience both in England and in Mexico, he doesn't want to go back abroad. Probably mm. want to go back to to France, but let's see. Let's see. Keep us up to date on that. Right, guys. Thank you. Uh, I guess this is it. We are way past an hour. The hour, way past the hour mark. Thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe. We would love you to become our three thousand uh, subscriber from Gate Seven International. Thank you for joining us, Costa. Would you like to do the honors? See you next time. Gatibar!